Welcome to Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. The message you are about to hear is from the Lord's anointed Dr. Edward Irobi, the man with the mandate to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to raise an army for the Lord in this end time. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. The image of the heavenly, the Lord Jesus Christ. The image of God. How can we get this done? Only through redemption plan. And that is what I want to discuss further with us. Man's spiritual inheritance was stolen by the ancient serpent. The Lord Jesus came to the scene to pay the ransom for human redemption. The spiritual meaning of redemption in the New Testament, there are four of those I want to highlight. The spiritual meaning of the word redemption in the New Testament. Just bear with me as we are joining right now. And uh, I want to highlight this spiritual meaning based on four Greek words. It is interesting to observe that there are four different Greek words for redemption in the New Testament. Each of them with a different shade of meaning. Are you ready? Let's see how these four Greek words will help us to appreciate the meaning of redemption. Number one, to be redeemed out of the slave market of sin involved a ransom payment that needed to be paid. And that represents the Greek word agoraz. Agoraz, which is a Greek word, signifies the meaning of redemption in this way. To be redeemed out of the slave market of sin involved a ransom payment that needed to be paid. And we know that the Lord Jesus came and made that payment. If we go to the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, we will appreciate this very well. Brother Paul here highlighted, for you we are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We are bought. We have been purchased. By the blood of the Lamb. Very high price. So this happened to be the meaning of that Greek word, agoras. Agoras. Or some people can call it agorazo. Redemption. Another one where we can bring it home to us. And I want you to understand, follow me a little bit. Let's journey to the book of Isaiah. Brother Isaiah brought it home here that the Lord Jesus, while on the cross, he brought salvation and he brought also our bodily healing. Under that same first definition, under that first Greek word, agorazo. Um, Isaiah chapter 50, 53, Isaiah 53. Let's see what the Lord has for us there. From verse number one to three, F, verse number one to um, five. Who had believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should deserve him. He is despised and the rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not telling us the sufferings of the Lamb of God. Telling us all the things the Lord Jesus will pass through 
prophet Isaiah got this revelation. Hundreds of years, if not thousands of years before the coming of the Messiah, before the coming of the Lamb of God. God is powerful. God is all-knowing in his wisdom. Verse number four. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, shrieking, smitten of God and afflicted. Number five. That he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Wow. Wait a minute. You may say, Edward, how does redemption again, we are talking about, bring healing? You made mention by his stripes, we are healed. Yes, you are correct. Because when the Lord Jesus came into the scene. His program of redemption became a holistic plan. His program of redemption became a holistic plan because what the devil robbed from Adam and Eve was everything. The devil robbed everything. He robbed human dominion. He robbed healing. He robbed salvation. He robbed everything that the Almighty planned for humanity. Now, for the King of Kings to come in the flesh, for the Lamb of God to come to pay the price for humans to, to be restored back to the Lord, the human race needs to have what? Holistic package of redemption program. And that is why we can now say, by his stripes, we are healed. Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary paid the price for my, my, my health on the cross. I shall not die. I will live to declare the works of the Lord. This sickness is not unto death, but to the glory of the Son of Man. Are you sick? You are listening to me. You are a child of God. You have been redeemed by the power of the Lord Jesus. You have been set free. Is any of your body aching? You can claim the power that brings healing to your body because of the redemption you have received through Jesus Christ. The redemption of your soul did not just pertain to your soul salvation. It also involves your bodily healing. Can you receive it today? If you agree, the power of God will touch you where you are. You just have to reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, I receive my healing. By your stripes, I am healed. You paid it on the cross, so it is unto me. Another thing I want us to highlight is that this, in the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, eh? There was a song that was sung, a new song. And that song had it to be in this way. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you we are slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Talking about the Lamb of God. How the Lord Jesus paid this price. He is worthy. To receive all that glory, all that honor, all that riches, all exaltation, because he has redeemed humanity by the reason of his blood that he shed on the cross. Point number two, to be redeemed out of the slave market of sin involved a purchase and freedom. And you can see that from the Greek word that uh, has it to be litro. Or Lytro, the Greek word Lytro, tells us that this redemption involved a purchase and uh, freedom. We have been set free. No shackles of sin anymore. No shackles of the devil will hold us in captivity. But I want to let you know something. This is a solemn moment. The Lord wants to speak to somebody right now. If the Lord Jesus Christ brought redemption and his redemption has brought freedom, 
Why is it that some people are still bound? Why is it that some people, after giving their life to Jesus, they are bound by one evil habit or the other? Today, I have a good message from the presence of the Lord. I have a good message from the throne of Jehovah. Today is the day of your freedom. Don't think that, oh, I will continue with this habit. Do you know some people call themselves believers in Christ and they still smoke? It means that they are still bound. The enemy is still using the chain of smoking to hold them in captivity. Whereas the Lord Jesus has brought redemption, including freedom from addiction, smoking addiction, alcohol addiction, even sex addiction, and any addiction that one can find himself in. Let's go through the scriptures in the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 61, I believe that the Lord will use this portion to bring peace to our hearts, telling us that the Lord Jesus has paid it all. We don't need to stay bound. We don't need to allow any addiction. We don't need to allow anything to hold us in captivity because Jesus brought holistic package of redemption, including freedom from anything that attempts to hold us in captivity. Isaiah chapter 61. I will read verse number one to verse number three. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, to the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The Lord has come. He has brought liberty. He does not want his people to be bound anymore. How can this be? How can I be set free? Someone may be saying, the Bible says it shall come to pass. Whosoever that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just reach out to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, save me. The Lord Jesus is able to save to the uttermost as many that will come to the Father through him. If we check the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19, here we will understand something that Brother Peter highlighted. Knowing that you we are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Peter reminds us again, the blood of Christ without blemish, without spot, that has brought our redemption, that has brought our liberty, that has set us free from the law of sin and death. <music>